Millions of people have taken an ancestry DNA test with one question in mind, who am I? And millions of people are still wondering even after they have their DNA test results. I'm Diane Southerd, your DNA guide, and this is Five Minutes with Your DNA. When you log into Ancestry DNA and you see the DNA summary page, there's a lot going on on this page. Today, we're going to focus on the DNA story section of your DNA results. When you click on that, you're going to see this really pretty map and a bunch of percentages. Both are telling you exactly the same thing. They're trying to reveal where your ancestors were according to your DNA. But even this results section has two different parts. This top part, the list of percentages, represents the locations your ancestors may have been hundreds of years ago, maybe four, five, eight hundred years ago, a long time. This information is based on what we call reference populations. These are other people that have had their DNA tested that are from a particular location. So here's how reference populations work. Essentially, ancestries gathered a bunch of people, say, from Norway, and tested their DNA. They've identified specific parts of their DNA that they consider to be, well, Norwegian, right? And once they've identified those segments, they're able to look at your DNA and figure out, do you or don't you have those Norwegian pieces of DNA? If you do, well, you're assigned to Norway. And that's the power of reference populations, and that's the power as we move forward in DNA testing, these reference populations just become better. More people are tested, which means the company can do a better job of determining what kind of DNA came from what place. So it's really important, though, that you understand what reference populations Ancestry DNA is testing. For example, if you know that your ancestors are from Estonia, for example, but Ancestry DNA doesn't have a reference population from Estonia, well, they can't tell you you're from Estonia. So it's really important that you review the reference populations tested by Ancestry DNA. You can do that by clicking at this link at the bottom of your DNA results page that says, See Other Regions Tested. Then it'll show you a big old list. And you can look down that list and see, okay, is the country that I think my ancestors are from on this list? If it's not, well, you know you're going to have a problem right from the get-go. Now, remember, there's two parts to these DNA ethnicity results. The first is based on these reference populations, as we just talked about. The second is based on your DNA matches. They call these additional communities, sometimes referred to as genetic communities. And these are groups of people that they believe you should have a common ancestor with in the last 200 years. These DNA communities are based on the pedigree charts of your DNA matches. So what they've done is they've gathered a group of people who are all sharing very similar amounts of DNA with each other. They're looking at people who have genealogy. They've done the work. They know where their people are from. They're looking at location and timing for those people. And the more people they can find that have the same ancestors in the same locations around the same time, a community is built. So if you have enough people that you're matching who are from a particular community, Ancestry DNA is going to assign you to that community. Now, if you click on one of those communities, a whole bunch of information is going to be made available to you. The best thing you can do in these is click everywhere. We could spend four more videos just going over all the information you could find in these genetic communities. You can see there's a timeline over here on the side that tells you when you're looking at. This whole map is interactive. You can click on all kinds of things in the map to show you where your ancestors may have been traveling. Of course, you can read all the information that Ancestry has about this location. You're going to have some DNA matches that are also a part of these locations. Like I said, rich, full of information. Click everywhere that you can. But the most important thing to understand about these communities is they are extremely accurate. While those other locations we were talking about earlier, the ones based on reference populations, yeah, they may or may not be correct. It depends on a lot of factors. These genetic communities are extremely accurate. So if you're looking at your results and you see a genetic community that you don't recognize, that should be the first thing you're looking at. If you have a brick wall or a missing ancestor or you're not sure where you're from, those genetic communities can reveal a lot of information about your ancestors in a very recent time frame. So that's all we've had time for in our five minutes with Diane Southerd and your DNA. But 
Here's a quick to-do list because I don't want you to go home without any homework. So the to-do list from this little mini session is pay attention to your genetic communities. They matter. Two, go look at all the hundreds of reference populations just to familiarize yourself with them and see if the locations you know your ancestors are from are even on the list. Three, have your older generation tested. If your parents or grandparents have still not taken a DNA test, they are going to be able to reveal much more about their heritage than you can, as you only have a small portion of your DNA. Now, if you've already tested or your older generation is not available, test your siblings. Remember, you only have half of your parents' DNA, which means your siblings have a totally different half. So all of you together are going to be able to provide a much more complete picture of your ancestral heritage than you could ever do by yourself. And last, click on everything. You're not gonna break the website, you're not going to delete your test. Click on everything. It's the best way to learn and explore. So until next time, I'm your DNA guide, Diane Southard, and this has been Five Minutes with Your DNA.